Converting the V7 spoked wheels into a tubeless conversion. Um, spoked wheels, tube tires. I'm not a huge fan of tube tires. Um, tubes are for bicycles and lawnmower tires. If you've got a motorcycle and you're out there on the road and you get a flat and you've got a tube, the only thing you can do is replace the tube or patch the tube, which means taking off the wheel, taking off the tire. It's hours and hours of work. Um, so this kind of conversion, it's been done thousands of times. There's loads of videos on YouTube on it, so I'm not even gonna bother filming the whole process of how you do it. Um, basically, get rid of your tires, get rid of your tubes, and expose your inner rims. Clean these up thoroughly, blow the dust out, wipe it down with acetone, um, clean it up so that the uh, sealant will bond and all you are doing is creating a seal on top of the spoke heads here. Now, in my decades of riding, I've never adjusted spokes. So I understand the whole balancing aspect of spoked wheels. Um, if your wheel is true and straight and balanced and everything else, sealing up this inner strip here, right here, is what we need to do. Now for that, I'm using uh, marine adhesive sealant, 5200. This stuff is designed to bond to metal um, and create an airtight waterproof seal. So it's literally a case of just turning the wheel, squeezing, squeezing, squeezing. There's a ton of videos, like I said, just look up tire, uh, spoke tire conversions um, to tubeless on YouTube and you'll see how to do it but uh, it's really really easy just buy a bunch of this I think this is a $25 tube of sealant you're just gonna fill the holes and smooth it out and create a nice uh, filled area of rubber sealant um, I'm putting this on a wheel cleaning chart which I use so that way I can turn it as I do it, nice, easy, simple. This is like a $15 part from Harbor Freight Tools. I've got both wheels to do and one tube of this, uh, which is 10 ounces, should be enough to do it. Okie dokie, so here's the uh, sealant installed, freshly installed. Um, both wheels have been done and I have used about two thirds of one of these tubes to do both rims. Um, super easy, just squirt it all the way along and all the way around, give you an idea. Fill the holes and then I went back again with another bead all the way. And then I took an old uh, credit card, a store card, and um, cut it to fit the channel of the bead. So if you can see there, this is my smoothing applicator that I just basically used it like a putty knife and just lightly pressed and pulled it all the way around and what that did was pushed it into the holes smoothed it out and gave me a really nice smooth finish like a giant rubber band down there now this stuff takes three days to dry but it completely bonds to pretty much all metal fiberglass um, and it will create a completely waterproof and airproof seal. Nothing from the air inside the uh, tire here when it's inflated won't be able to get through to the, the spoke holes. And that's pretty much it. I've seen people use tape and they go tape over the top, but I'm really not quite sure why they would bother doing that. Um, if your sealant does its job, then uh, you're done. Um, I understand if you're doing a lot of off-roading, then maybe, or if you are adjusting the spokes, maybe that's gonna cause the uh, inner spoke heads to turn. That might cause a disruption here, so the tape is just a, a backup, basically. But I'm not gonna tape this. I think this is just a waste of another $30 to buy the tape that would stick to the inside of this channel on top of this. Um, so there we go. Super easy, that's the front wheel with the... Uh, rubber sealant installed. Now, no one's gonna see this, it's invisible, it's inside the tire. So, as much as it's nice to keep it super 
clean it doesn't have to be no one's gonna see it I think the most important thing is just keep it as smooth as you can and that's really gonna help with the balancing of the tire you don't want a big clump of uh, sealant on one side and then a very thin clump on the other that's gonna offset the balance and you're gonna have to add a lot more weights to your tire but that is basically tire sealant over the inner spoke heads uh, inside your tire so once this is dried in three days so this takes a full three days to dry um, just put it down and let it set up so quick follow-up to my tubeless conversion to the Moto Guzzi V7 rims um, this is four days after spreading the sealant all over the uh, inner heads of the spokes so the first couple of days this was really really tacky you literally couldn't touch it without it coming off on your hands um, right now this is day four it says seven days to a full cure i would be very comfortable putting the rim the tires on the rims right now um, this is completely uh, tack free it feels like a soft squidgy rubber um, as you can see i've installed the new uh, stems all the way through I did have to drill out the hole very slightly to take the the new stem and I did add a splodge all the way around the sealant um, so that it becomes part of the seal um, these stems only really ever fail uh, with the rubber washer on the backing um, that usually fails or the Schrader valve on the inside of the stem goes so the rubber wash is never going to fail now with this rubber sealant all the way around it and if the Schrader valve goes I can just unscrew it and replace it so these are basically now part of the rim if I did need to cut them out that's all I would do is just take a sharp knife cut it off um, and undo the uh, the nut here and drop it through but nice stainless steel high quality valve so that'll be good uh, so the next thing I need to do is take this down to my local cycle gear store and have my new tires which are on special order installed so the next time we see these rims we'll have uh, new tires on them and I'll be able to put them back on the bike okay so the final update to the tubeless rim conversion I've got my new tires on uh, these are Heidenhauer K60 Scout tires come around this side so we get to see them somewhat clearly um, these are a, a dual sport tire um, on my tubeless rims now these tires are inflated to 40 psi which is almost max pressure they've been on for this is the day four that they actually have been mounted uh, to the rims and on the bike and I've been checking the pressure every day and they are both still at 40 psi so I am comfortable that these tubeless rims are holding air just perfectly come around here you can see my valve stem there we go if I'm out in the wild or on the freeway and I pick up a nail or a screw or a piece of metal and it punctures the tire all I can do is use my um, tire kit and uh, plug the hole pull out the pull out the offending piece of metal uh, and as long as you don't have any damage in the sidewall of the tire between the outside of the tread here and the inside of the rim as long as there's no puncture here you should be good I have a couple of times used a plug kit on sidewalls um, but just for long enough to get me to a tire repair place or home <laughs> and then yes you got to take off the rim and properly puncture uh, puncture repair with a patch on the inside a lot of tire shops will not repair sidewalls once the sidewall has got some damage in it your tire is done you can do it at home of course but it's you know you're running the risk of another another flat um, however plugging the uh, tread area of a tire absolutely fine especially on the tubeless tires that's the whole point all you have to do is pull out the nail plug the hole with a mushroom plug or a rope seal plug and uh, add some glue to it and it bobs your uncle you're done however tire plugs are considered to be temporary so use them at your own discretion anyway k60 tires from Heidenhauer the scout tire on tubeless rims um, and that was a literally uh, with the cost of the 
I think that the valves were six dollars for the pair, and the it was twenty five for the for the glue for the three M adhesive. So that's really it. Now I don't have to worry about tubes. So good luck if you try to do this. It's a super easy, um, I think, excellent thing to do to your motorcycle to never have to worry about tubes again. And of course, you know, if you do want to go back to tubes, you can go back to tubes. All you need to do is uh, remove the valve stem and put a tube in. Um, so you'll always have that option. Um, Anyway, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed this. Please like, please subscribe. Please ride safely. Come home alive.